how to handle rejection gracefully and learn from it. Now we've all experienced rejection in one form or another, whether it's going up and approaching a girl, whether you're in a conversation with a girl who rejects you, or you're even going on dates with a girl and she no longer wants to see you. I actually just had a, a big name celebrity who I hung out with once actually unfollow me on Instagram. Some people would even deem that as a rejection in one way or another. We've all experienced some forms of rejection. However, it's the way that you react and respond to rejection that's ultimately gonna dictate your success, how far you can go with self-development, confidence, and social skills. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over your mindset around rejection, how to rewire your brain, the different types of rejection you may experience, and more importantly, what to do in those situations so you can actually learn from those experiences to really fast track your results. Let's get into the first one, which is your mindset around rejection. Now, the first thing to understand is that they didn't actually reject you as a person. They only rejected the small sample size that they got to experience of you as a person. All right, I know that sounds kind of weird or it might sound like a, a cop out of an answer, but it's actually the truth is that when someone rejects you, they're rejecting a small sample size that they got to experience of who you are as a person. And unfortunately, they got to see unappealing side of who you are. Okay, so it was a small sample size and they then drew a conclusion that they no longer wanted to experience that person. So don't take it that personal. It's really not a big deal because truthfully, if most people that actually rejected me, if I were to think back on like people, girls that rejected me or people that didn't wanna be my friend, the reality is, is that they genuinely don't know who I really am as a person deep down. And if they got to experience what I've been through or knew more about my story, the reality is that they would most likely be cool with me. Anybody that knows me on a deep level actually is relatively cool with me because I take care of myself. I have really good morals. I, I'm trying to put value out into the world and I genuinely feel like I'm a good person. And as long as you're a dude who's on your self-development journey trying to become better, that's very true for you as well. So. If somebody rejects you or doesn't want to be around you, you can't take it personal, man. Don't make it a big deal. Don't identify with the idea that you're a, a loser or a reject. Just view it as it's all good. They don't really know who I am. And also you want to view it as a learning experience. And that's the next part I want to talk about around mindset of rejection is that when somebody gets rejected, the wrong thing to do is to start identifying with that rejection as if that's you, as if you're the reject, okay? You want to view it more as, okay, the way that I interacted with this person, that small sample size that I presented to that person did not resonate with them in an attractive way. And for that reason, they rejected that sample size. However, that has nothing to do with who I am as a person. I'm on my self-development journey. I'm going to learn from that experience and moving forward, I'm going to make the necessary changes to start to present myself in a more attractable way moving forward. That's all self-development is. If you're trying to get better, if you're trying to work on your look, you're trying to work on your communication, you're trying to network with higher level people, you're going to mess up from time to time. You're going to present yourself in ways that isn't the best version of you. And that's okay, all right? The times that you don't have the best presentation of yourself or the times that the person didn't get to see the best version of yourself, just learn from it. A great metaphor that kind of illustrates this concept is the idea of shooting a basketball. You're not going to become a really good shooter without shooting the ball consistently, missing some shots and learning what you did wrong when you shot that ball and it missed. Okay, you take the shot, it goes slightly to the right. You then internally think to yourself, okay, I just shot that ball and it was slightly off to the side. And that's all good. That doesn't mean I'm a shitty shooter. That doesn't mean I suck at basketball. It just means I need to adjust and the next time I'm going to try to do it a little bit better. And it may not be perfect the next time. And that's okay. It's a learning experience. And every shot that you take guys is another opportunity to get your shot better. And to really hammer this point home, I wanna talk about a surprising statistic that I recently learned about, which was the idea that Steph Curry, one of the best three point shooters of all time, he's taken 2.5 million three pointers in his career of practicing basketball. I'm not talking about in the game. I'm talking about off the court, practicing shooting three-pointers. He shot in 2.5 million threes. All right, and that probably seems like an astronomical number. And honestly, I, I agree. It is a very big number. But the surprising statistic for me was that out of that 2.5 million, he's only shot about 15,000 
in actual games. And out of those 15,000, he's only made three and a half thousand threes in game. Think about how many times you've seen Steph Curry effortlessly make a three in game. He's only made 3.5 thousand of those in game. And behind the scenes, he shot in 2.5 million, okay? That's a lot of missed shots for a little bit of showtime making shots to make it appear effortlessly. Now, if Seth Curry went onto the court and he missed a three and he started to tell himself, damn, I suck. Damn, I'm never gonna get better with this. Damn, I'm a bad shooter. The reality is, is that he would have never made it as far as he did. However, when you start to view this stuff, guys, as it's just an opportunity, I, I'm not going to identify with that thought. I'm going to start to see a rejection or a missed shot as a learning experience. And it's a good thing that you're shooting the ball because how do you become a better shooter? Newsflash, it's not sitting at home all day watching videos about how to get better with shooting. If Steph Curry stayed home watching videos all day on how to shoot, he would never be the shooter that he is. So you need to start rewiring your brain. If you get a rejection, it's honestly a good thing, dude. It means you're on the fucking court taking the shot. You know who I'm worried about? Is the dude who's not getting rejected, the dude who's not taking the shot, and the dude who's staying home consistently just watching videos afraid to even step onto the court. All right, and if that's you, it's all good, but you need to have a little bit of a wake up call right now and realize, hey, I'm watching a lot of videos or I'm afraid to even step onto the court. And as a means of making a little bit of progress, I'm just going to metaphorically step onto the court, dribble a ball and try to take a layup. And you start by taking layups if that's where you need to start. And as you get more confident by seeing the ball going in, learning from the missed shots, you can then slowly start to back up and take more difficult shots. And it's the same thing with social interaction, approaching women, going on dates, all right? The first girl I ever went on a date with was not a smoke show. The girl I first girl I ever brought home, I will not show that girl publicly online, okay? And that's all good because I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about the rejections. I'm not worried about the missed shots. I'm focused on the journey and where that's taking me because with each shot missed, I'm learning, I'm getting better, I'm perfecting the craft. So now that we have the right mindset around rejection and we're starting to focus more on seeing the opportunities and learning experiences and moving through those small little baby steps to build up the confidence, I want to talk about some different types of rejections you may encounter. Now, the most obvious or common rejection is what I call the blowout. Now, this is when you would actually go up to a girl. She doesn't respond to you whatsoever, and she either goes and walks directly around you or she walks past you. She doesn't even say a word to you. She kind of just looks at you and just continues walking. Now, that rejection is actually pretty common. However, I also think it's the most misunderstood rejection that you may experience because a lot of dudes will experience that and they really identify with that. Damn, she didn't even want to talk to me. She didn't even she didn't even say anything to me. It's because I'm ugly. It's because I suck. I'm never going to get good at this, right? Although it is the most harsh rejection, in my opinion, uh, that's how I used to look at it. What I've actually learned is that that girl knows absolutely nothing about you. She literally rejected a one phrase sentence that you said to her and honestly guys newsflash if she didn't stop if she didn't respond if she didn't even give you any attention it's it has nothing to do with who you are as a person it's not because you're ugly it's not because you suck as a person it's because you didn't even command enough attention for her to give you one to two seconds all right i don't care how ugly you are if you can talk with a good volume at a safe distance with the, the right vocal pitch, the right authoritative voice and a nice smile on your face, you're gonna be able to pretty much get anybody's attention at least for a couple seconds. So just because you got blown out doesn't mean that you suck or anything. It just means, dude, doesn't mean you suck or anything. Just take a mental note. It's like, yo, uh, the girl's not even stopping and giving me one second. And that's because I'm not commanding enough attention or I'm not opening with enough authority to actually get one to two seconds of her attention. That's all it means. So what you really want to do is actually start to analyze, guys. Well, am I opening at a safe distance? Am I talking loud enough? Most of you guys are not talking loud enough, and that's the sole reason you're getting rejected. You're talking in a creepy way where you don't want to interrupt the girl or you're like, hey, excuse me, uh, don't want to be uh don't want to interrupt i know you're busy i'm, I'm sorry can, can i can i ask you a, a question you blow out even before that the moment she's like hey excuse me or hey i like your thing it's a blowout you didn't command attention that first one second was not authoritative enough 
or confident enough for a stranger, an attractive girl to actually stop and give you her undivided attention. Now let's get a little bit further into the interaction. Let's say you're actually talking to a girl and you've been in back and forth communication. And at some point she may just start to slowly walk away. She may say, I have a boyfriend. She may say, thanks, that's really sweet, but I'm busy. She might say, cool, but we're actually going over there or I'm going to the bathroom, take care. Nice to meet you. Okay, that's the next form of rejection that you may encounter. And the thing that you need to understand about this is that, okay, great, you opened, you got into the interaction, you started a conversation. However, it wasn't captivating enough to keep the girl hooked, which is like level two, right? We got past level one, we got into the interaction. However, now we're not hooking the set. And so for that reason, we got into 30 seconds to a couple of minutes of interaction and it just didn't captivate and wrap up the girl. And that's okay too. It's just a different sticking point. And what you need to learn if you're in that position is that, okay, I'm opening probably okay, but most likely still a little weak. And also what I'm transitioning the conversation into, meaning my small talk, my vibe, my emotional spikes, my teasing, my conversation topics, the way that I'm flowing in the conversation with her, it's not strong enough. So again, you need more animation, more expression, more emotional spikes in your conversation, and really just learning how to cultivate a stronger vibe and charisma, which is totally fixable by the way guys like i was at the lowest fucking level of this and i've struggled with every point in this uh rejection scale that we're going over so if that's where you're at just be aware of those are the things you need to be focusing on right now now let's go a little bit further let's say you're actually getting phone numbers or starting to go on dates and after that it's starting to fizzle out now we're at a different level we're hooking we're getting that initial intrigue we're getting into deeper conversation we're getting girls to actually go out or hang out with us for an extended period of time however for those guys there's a different sticking point which is you're not really creating the attraction you're not positioning yourself in the high status frame where the girl's actually chasing, desiring you, craving you, getting aroused, thinking intimate thoughts or, or wrapping up her imagination sexually, getting her to the point where she's actually really wanting you or excited to, to want to keep hanging out with you or really like sexually charged. Okay, so that's all based around creating attraction and escalating. And the good news again is that if that's where you're at, quality problem, at least now we're getting into interactions with women and I get it's a frustrating point to be rejected after a date or hang out with the girl, but it's all good. You can learn the attraction skill sets to build this stuff up. So no matter where you're at, whether it's approaching girls, starting conversations, like hooking sets, getting into longer interactions, creating that attraction, escalating, running dates or closing, no matter where you're at, just understand that there's levels to this. And as you keep going and learning from the rejection, you're ultimately going to succeed. You just don't take it personal. If I go on a date with the girl and she doesn't want to see me again, I'm not like, damn, I suck. I'm hopeless. I'm never going to get good at this. Fuck that, dude. Fuck that. Instead, do some sort of analytical review. How did the date go? What's the date theory? Let me watch the coach Kyle how to run a first date step by step. Okay, he said do this, this, this. Well, I did this and this, but I'm struggling with this. Put your focus there now, guys, and put the attention on the next piece that you're struggling with. All right, anybody that gets good at a, a sport, you know, back to the basketball analogy or any kind of a sport, they practice, right? They study, they practice, then they go implement in game, and then they do a, some sort of analytical review, which is them like studying the tapes. Okay, and then they go back to practice. They work on that skill set that they were struggling with. Then they go back into the game and they implement it. And then they go and they review it again. So you're watching videos right now. This is great. You're studying. Now you need to start practicing this stuff out loud. Write down the drills that you're going to do. Write down what your next structured out goal is that you're going to do. You're going to go into the field or into the game and practice in game. And then you're going to review. You break down the interactions. You start to break down the dates. You start to see how did I do this week? How was the interaction? How was the date? What did I do well? What do I need to be focusing on? All right, this is how you're gonna get better consistently. And again, if you're if you're so wrapped up in the idea of rejection and thinking you're a failure and thinking you suck and you beat yourself down over this shit, well then it's not gonna be a fun, enjoyable process. And that's ultimately gonna lead to burnout, frustration and you not wanting to continue. However, if you're looking at it from a positive standpoint or if you have a coach, you have a community, you have people that are kind of supporting you through this thing. That's another big part of this. All of those elements can help you fast track your results. So as I'm saying this, guys, if you want help with any of this shit, you need to help overcome your rejection, get better with your conversation structure, flirting, escalating, running days. I can help you with this shit, man. I can structure this shit out. I'll point out your blind spots. I'll show you exactly what you need to do. You can book out a free consultation call. The link is in the description. Click that link. 
Okay. So those are the different types of rejections that you may experience, depending on where you're at in this progression of building up your social skills in your dating life. Now that we've talked about having the right mindset, you understand the different types of rejections and how we can start employing this stuff. Let's talk about how to actually rewire your brain to really get success with this and learn and grow fast as fuck. The first part of this, it starts with having action based goals. The problem with negative self talk and rejection is that you're basing your general sense of well being based off of the person's reaction of you. Someone rejected you. A girl doesn't want to date you anymore. You go up on the, made the approach and the girl rejected you. You start to tell yourself she reacted negatively equals. I feel bad about myself. I'm not a good person. I'm a shitty person. I suck at this, whatever it may be. However, you need to start looking more at the goal, the action based goal, not the reaction based goal, the action based goal. Okay. So again, before I was showing you that you're at, there's different levels. You're either getting rejected off of the approach or in conversation or attraction or setting up dates or running dates, wherever you're at in this thing, you want to set up small, easy, structured goals that are action based that you could start working on consistently. It's not about going out that one night a week for four hours and trying to blast out a bunch of this shit. In my opinion, I'd much rather you do a tiny bit somewhat consistently. Hypothetically, I'd rather you go up and talk to three girls a day every day, seven days, 21 interactions a week versus you go out one night and you try to do 30 or 40 interactions because it's more about who you are consistently. If you go out one day every month, one date every two months, that's really not that much momentum to actually be building up a skill set of learning from. That's like going to the gym once a week, once a month or shooting that three pointer once a week, once a month. So you want to look at more small bursts consistently because that's actually how you change the identity level of who you are. You're doing the task consistently and it's not that big of a task. So it's easier to execute on a small daily basis. You build up momentum that way. And over time, you're going to be able to keep going up and up and up and up. So having very small structured action based goals for your day or your week is an absolute game changer. Now I want to talk about the self talk that happens when you hit that goal. Before I was mentioning your self talk is dictated by the person's reaction. Fuck that. We're done with that, because no matter how many people you talk to, Inevitably, there's going to be somebody that gives you a negative reaction. And if even if I was doing good for the day and I get that one bad reaction, if that's what dictates my general well-being, I'm inevitably going to feel like a piece of shit no matter where I'm at in the day or the week. So instead, what you want to do is focus on the action based goal, meaning I'm trying to go up and talk to five girls today. And as long as you're hitting that action based goal for the day, you need to fucking congratulate yourself, dude. You got to tell yourself, fuck, yeah, let's go. All right, because if you don't say that, it's just a matter of time before the negative reaction comes in and then the self-talk starts kicking in and starts beating you back down. So you got to be aware of the self-talk that's going on after every single time you're taking action. You're slowly going to rewire your brain. If you're not congratulating yourself on the action based goal, it's just a matter of time before you get negative reactions. And we're so used to fucking identifying with those thoughts that it's just going to keep bringing you down. So instead, what you need to do is Look at the criteria for, did I take this action today? Did I hit this goal today? Did I do this action? Check, yes, fuck yes, let's go. Did this, fuck yes, let's go. Talk to the three girls, fuck yes, let's go. Now, that's what's gonna dictate your general sense of well being. And that's why I like setting up small, easy, executable goals that you could do consistently because that's how you'll actually build up momentum this way. And also, if you do take the right action, even if they give you a negative response, I want you to fucking celebrate that. I want you to walk away thinking, fuck yeah, let's go. Because it's like, I took the shot. I wasn't even taking the shot before, dude. I'm taking the fucking shot. Okay, did it go in? No, but I'm taking the shot. And that was my goal was to take five three pointers today. So I hit, I took my five three pointers. Fuck yeah, let's go. Now with each one of those at the end of the day, remember we're practicing, we're going in game and then we're studying after. So you, after the game, you want to look at, did I hit the shot? No, I didn't. Okay, that was off. What did I do wrong there? I wouldn't approach the girl. I got blown out. What did I do wrong there? Okay, my voice was off. I didn't talk loud enough. I need to fix this thing next time I'm in that situation. Or I was in the conversation. She ended up walking away. Damn, you know what I should have said? Let me write this down. Next time I'm in that situation, I, I'm going to say this. Kyle said to do that one thing. That was a good line, actually. I'm going to say that next time. And that's how you start to learn from this shit. Just like you take the three, even if you miss all five three-pointers that day, 
day. If you were not taking three pointers the week before, but now you're going out and you're shooting threes and you go 0 for 5, I'm going to look at that dude and think that dude's going to get better at shooting now because he's consistently shooting the ball. He's studying and he's reviewing his form. And over time, that shot's going to get better. And once those shots start going in more and more and more, then he's really going to be on fire because he's already fired up just at the fact that he's taking action. That's a really good way to start rewiring your brain. It's like, I don't give a fuck what their reaction is. I'm focused on my goal. And if I hit the action based goal, fuck yeah, let's go. And at the end of the day, you go home and you review. What did I do well? What could have been done better? What is the one thing about my shot or about that thing that I want to do slightly better tomorrow? And when you do this over the course of multiple days in a row, that leads into weeks, that leads into months in a row, guys, that's how you can make a massive fucking transformation. Give you a little bit of a backstory. I, I was in the process of moving over the last month or so. I just relocated to Miami. There was a time where I wasn't really going out that much. I was I had to double down on the business. I, I was busy with the move back and forth, taking flights, really working my ass off. But as of lately, I've been starting to go out consistently. Not crazy. I haven't been going out till like 4 a.m. in the club. I've been going out every single day for about an hour to an hour and a half, pushing myself socially. And I can tell you, six days in a row of just doing that little bit, it's really transforming my own mindset around this thing. I'm, I'm really going all out. And I noticed that I'm hitting more higher levels now that I'm going out consistently. So you want to use the right mindset to change your perception of how to handle rejection along with understanding what the different types of rejections are so that way you could realize where you're fucking up learn from it and then the last part of this is rewiring your brain it's using the proper self-talk having action-based goals and rewarding yourself when you're hitting those fucking goals consistently that's going to create that momentum and that upward spiral of success okay so if you want help with this guys you want to work with me personally to structure out your goals fix your self-talk work with you directly hold you accountable show you the step-by-step -step structure to accomplish your goals with women and dating click the link in the description book out a free consultation call with me all right it's completely free i'll sit down with you and show you the process step by step to hit the goals you want this year all right you've watched enough videos stop watching videos it's not going to get you anywhere click the link in the description that's all for this video guys peace out